Hello everybody. Welcome to the Magnificent Mono Basin. Today's episode, we are going to cover a brief overview of the Mono Basin. In particular, it's focusing on the geology of the Mono Basin, setting the stage for perhaps a few more uh, chats about specific elements of the geology of the Mono Basin. The interesting thing here in the Mono Basin is the wide diversity of geologic features. This 3D structure, as you can see, we have the mighty Sierra Nevada. That's the first thing everybody's eye keys in on. High mountain filled with snow today. That's to the west. To the north, we have another range lightly dusted in snow, the Bodie Hills, lower in elevation than this year in Nevada. And as we ring around the basin's eastern margin, we come to a range called the Caltrack Mountains. Both the Caltrack and the Bodie Hills are ranges formed through volcanism. So they're made of volcanic rocks. The Bodhi Hills are older, spanning a time from about 10 to 5 million years. Eruptions occurred in different intervals. And they're famous now, at least, for their gold. And that gold formed during these volcanic intervals where there was hydrothermal fluids circulating through. And as we get to the now eastern side where the Caltrack Mountains are, those are younger, two, three million years old. And then to the south, we have a truly epic for volcanic formation that forms the Mono Basin's southern boundary. And that, it, that boundary is the northern edge of the Long Valley Caldera formed during a monumental event, which was the eruption of the Bishop Tuff about 760,000 years ago. Volcanic activity there centered, centered there did occur from much older time, say about 4 million years. And activity persisted until at least 50,000 years ago. We, that forms part of the volcanic units found near Mammoth Mountain. So coming back, now we reach back to the western side of the Mono Basin. And the geologic units that compose the Sierra Nevada record history that persists from about 200 or so million years to about 50 million years ago. And there's a long series of geologic events that are recorded in the Sierra Nevada, so about 150 million years. But the most prominent thing or aspect that you can see in the Sierra Nevada is the granite. And that granite is the product of volcanic activity that occurred as a plate subducted beneath the North American plate that we are on today. And as a result of that subduction, magma was produced and that magma was injected into the crust. The extrusive part of that, as we know, like what we'll see in just a moment, has now been removed through erosion. And what's left behind is what we know as the granite. And that is the magma that cooled beneath the crust slowly. The current structure of the Mono Basin that we see, which is the high Sierra and then the lower valley here that Mono Lake occupies, is a reflection of the rifting that's occurring today. And that continental rifting is here in the Mono Basin part of a much larger region of rifting that occurs in the western U.S. 
that geologists dub the Great uh, Basin and Range Province. And that province is well expressed in these series of mountains or called ranges and valleys called basins that stretch from here, the Mona Basin, which is the westernmost expression of this range, out east towards Utah. And as you go, if you're driving, you're going to go through highways that cut across or go up and over these ranges and into the valleys, sort of this up and down uh, trip. Now, if you're flying, say, from the west coast to the east coast or somewhere into the continental interior, this expression, this geologic expression, will be well, well observed in these north-south-ish trending mountain ranges and in the valleys that lie between them. And valleys that, like Mono Basin here, and like Owens Valley to the south, formed about four-ish million years ago, maybe a little bit younger, but we know that here in the Mono Basin it's been at least since four million years ago. And that uh, rifting prior to that, what existed here was a broad, high plateau called the Nevada Plano, similar to what you may find in South America in the Andean Altiplano and Puna Plateau. And the subsequent dissection of this uh, high plateau resulted in the Mono Basin today. And coincident with that rifting that occurred about 4 million years ago was the eruption of a younger suite of volcanoes. And what we see today as the extrusive part, the elements of volcanism that uh, was deposited onto the surface of the earth as opposed to the into the crust like the older Sierra Nevada. So around three, four-ish million years ago, we have volcanism occurring because of this rifting process to the south in what is today that Long Valley Caldera area. And about a million years ago, or about 760,000 years ago, the volcanism that did occur in the Long Valley Caldera formed this massive eruption in the Bishop Tuff, as I had said earlier, and that formed this depression, which was the caldera itself, which was later filled in again by a resurgent dome. That's what it's called. But as this rifting continued, and still continues today, a new suite of volcanic units formed. M most prominent there, if you can see, now blanketed in snow, which is the Mono Craters. The Mono Craters is a chain of volcanoes that formed beginning so at least about 70,000 years ago and continues through until at least about 600 years ago with the youngest expression of volcanism along that chain forming the crater we know as Panem Crater. Evidence of these eruptions is not only seen, or uh, evidence of the eruptions from the Mono Craters is not only seen in the structures themselves, the volcanoes, but also in the ashes that were produced from those eruptions that blanketed the landscape and were deposited both across the sub aerially exposed landscape like today, but also within the lake. And we see those ashes deposit in the lake in the old lake beds of Mono Lake that can be found really as high as where we are today at the elevation of Levining and in fact still higher about mm, maybe 100 feet higher close to about 70 40 feet now the Mono craters is not the only expression of volcanism in the Mono Basin there is also even older, uh, an older set of eruptions centered at 
what is today known as Black Point. Black Point, if you can see in the distance, has this dark black or medium-ish brownish colored uh, volcanic edifice at its top. Was a fairly bizarre eruption compared to the because it mostly erupted into the lake. So during the last ice age when Mono Lake was much higher than it was today and in fact reached at close to the current edifice of Black Point volcanic activity was elevated and in fact there's a broad trend so Black Point fits a broad linear sort of trend that can be traced to the Mono Craters and the expression of that volcanic eruption, because it was beneath the lake surface, is this broad, flat-topped surface. And that's what you can see with Black Point. That eruption happened about 17,000 years ago, close to the end of the last ice age. And subsequent to that, there have been other eruptions in the lake, or that took place in the lake. One of those is Pooha Island, which is well expressed, you cannot miss it, beige colored surface that outcrops in the middle of the lake. And what's strange about that one, in a different way compared to Black Point, is that actually the surface is not an actual volcanic deposit in its purest sense. It's not a volcanic rock. It's actually uplifted lake sediments. So because the eruption took place beneath the lake, it actually domed up lake sediments from the floor of the lake. And that's what we see on the surface. It's actually geologically a pretty cool uh, event. And just to the north of that, we have another feature, Nejid Island. It's an older uh, volcanic deposit, which is actually ex um, includes multiple eruptions say about 1500 years ago and together that forms a whole set of volcanic features that remains active today and you can see that in hydrothermal activity even on the southern shore of the lake with hot spring waters bubbling up also to the north of the lake during the winter time you can see the hot spring waters um, from the plume of steam that comes up <laughs> while everything else is blanketed in snow. And so together, the basin is this expression of much older volcanic history, relict intrusive rocks that are now exposed in the surface, that is the Sierra Nevada, extrusive volcanic rocks in the Bodhi Hills, 15 to about 5 million years, Caltrack Mountains out to the distance on the eastern side a few million years, and even younger, the Bishop Tuff in the Long Valley Caldera, which is about a million years old, at least the, the sorry, the Bishop Tuff eruption is a 760,000 years old. And then the youngest expression of this rifting and volcanic activity, which is the Mono Craters, Black Point, and these volcanic islands in the lake, set the stage for this really intriguing set of Com combining tectonic features, climatic features, which hopefully I'll talk to you guys in the future about. And now, of course, filled with this widely varying biogeographic uh, zones. That is the Mono Basin.